Chapter 12, Water and Major Minerals. Water is a very important component in the body. We know it evaporates from the skin. That rate is accelerated in low humidity, high altitude, pressurized cabin in an airplane. So we know in those situations we are to drink more water. We can survive several weeks without food, but only a couple of days without water and our body is about 45 to 75 percent water depending on the amount of muscle. Lean people that have uh, more muscle have a higher water uh, percentage because muscle is about three-fourths water. Adipose tissue is about 10 percent water and thus a bodybuilder would need more water intake than somebody that's obese. We know that water has many functions in the body. As far as heat capacity, it takes a lot of heat to change the temperature of the body, helping with extremes of environmental temperatures. We know it helps cool the body. You take a nice cold drink of water on a hot day, it does cool a person down. Also involves many chemical reactions uh, for our metabolism. It's a major buffer. Uh, for uh, carbonic acid and bicarbonate at, with our pH balance. And then we know that water is a major component of many body fluids, such as um, in the GI system, helps to lubricate, helps to cleanse. It's a shock absorber in our fluid in the joints and protects the body overall. In looking at cations or positively charged ions and anions or negatively charged ions, we know that those hydrogen bonds, water does have a strong surface tension influencing that. Looking at major fluid compartments in the body, most of our fluid is intracellular. Water is about two-thirds intracellular. We know that intrastitial uh, is your edema. When you eat a lot of sodium, where that sodium pulls water to is that interstitial space that gives us what we notice as edema or our shoes and rings are tight the next day. When we look at that semi-permeable membrane, we know that water but not solutes can pass through that and so water flow to make both sides equal is that process called osmosis. When we look at the balance, that sodium and potassium pump is talked about in the book and we know that as I said, sodium can negatively or positively influence the direction of where that water goes. Looking at osmotic pressure, we know it's that force uh, causing the water to flow across that membrane from an area or side of increased concentration of ions to the other side. And also looking in the wa uh, water in the body, as I said, that sodium potassium pump causes that shift in those fluids into the three different compartments of the body where fluids are held. Most of the water in the body is intracellular. How much water is enough? You've probably heard people say eight glasses of water is what they recommend. It's higher for women that are pregnant because the woman is growing uh, placental tissue, amniotic fluid. Her blood volume is increasing by 50% in order to uh, get ready for that uh, labor and delivery. And with lactation, there are specific recommendations. Women that breastfeed need to drink a lot more water because there is a very strong equation with the amount of water consumed with the amount of milk that uh, the woman is able to produce to feed that baby. Every time a woman sits down to uh, breastfeed, she is recommended to drink at least one cup of water plus um, additional if the um, baby is having uh, low urine output. We know athletes and people that are active need a lot more water because they are sweating and burning it off in, in uh, the process of ev evaporation and our sports drinks help with that. Men need about 3.7 liters of water per day and lactating women need about 3.8 liters per day. Uh, water is excreted. We know that that insensible water loss is something that we have to take into consideration, especially as nurses working with patients that might have a fever, any illness where they're breathing faster because insensible water loss is through your breath. You know that when you go outside on a really cold day and you can see your breath, that is the water leaving and hitting that cold water. Anybody with rapid breathing, um, lots of open wounds with uh, draining, tissue or uh, Jackson Pratt drains, they need more intake of fluids because they're losing it. 
we know that that water balance then is regulated by the amount of fluid that's excreted in the urine, in the feces, in vomit, many of those uh, ways that we excrete fluid. Our blood volume is also um, a huge part of water balance. We will start looking at uh, blood volume and blood pressure as related to taking diuretics, trying to lower the blood pressure. And when you have somebody that has hypovolemia um, and their blood pressure is very low, we usually give them a <coughs> excuse me, fluid bolus or a fluid challenge uh, with their IV fluids, trying to increase that blood pressure. Your thirst is the most important stimulus for drinking. Many people. Um, are not able to notice that they feel thirsty and they misinterpret those cues as being hungry and they will come home from somewhere and eat something instead of actually drinking a glass of water what the body needs um, and then the water reabsorption in the GI tract when we look at preventing constipation and some of the other GI issues we know that water is part of that equation people that drink a lot of caffeine alcohol um, can affect fluid balance because they are natural diuretics. They can cause some dehydration and we know our signs of dehydration are things like decreased appetite. They can be dizzy from a low blood volume and blood pressure which we call orthostatic hypotension. Uh, muscle spasms and then a very dark concentrated amber urine is also a sign we look for that uh, tells us if the person is dehydrated. Looking at our water balance then it is regulated uh, through our blood volume and blood pressure and it's that hormonal process called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system that we learn in pathophysiology but we start laying the foundation for that process because that is the basis of many of your uh, medications for blood pressure control when we look at ACE inhibitors they are directly related to making of the hormones to vasodilate in the body to uh, help lower blood pressure. We know that thirst is uh, elevated uh, with increased osmolarity you have a dry mouth and it increases that hormone increasing that angiotensin 2 in the body. Older people and infants are very vulnerable to dehydration Older people have a decreased thirst sensation and so uh, if you work in long-term care many times the nurses will tell you make sure you encourage uh, the residents to drink some fluids in between meals because they don't feel thirsty and they don't want to bother the nurse aides by um, needing assistance to the restroom often so they just don't drink very much and then they uh, get dehydrated and as I said you can see that compounding effect of low blood pressure and they get dizzy and fall when they do stand or they get a urinary tract infection as it relates to uh, being dehydrated. Infants a very large proportion of their body weight is water and they are uh, very important that we watch that because a baby with diarrhea um, needs to be treated and seen by a physician much earlier than an, uh, an adult because of that percentage of water or body that is water and they get dehydrated very quickly. We know the osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus are very sensitive to sodium concentration and as we look at antidiuretic hormone that is a hormone that conserves water. It's very sensitive to your plasma osmolarity and we have an increased antidiuretic hormone when you have blood loss or other fluid loss. Antidiuretic hormone tells your body save all the water don't make any urine and what you will see then is the body keeps what it has to trying to maintain the vital organs, the blood pressure, um, the vascular system. We know water is also essential for elimination of waste. Urea is the uh, product of protein breakdown and when uh, a person has toxins in the body they are eliminated by the urine through the kidneys and oftentimes that is uh, encouraged when a person drinks water and they void and their um, nephron spin as a result of having uh, blood pressure to the kidneys from increased water intake. A person that increases their protein or their sodium in their diet also needs to increase the water to help eliminate them and that becomes important people that take the start the Atkins diet where the large amount of protein in the diet uh, need more water to eliminate the byproduct or the waste products of that protein intake that they have. 
And we know then that the kidneys are very sensitive to a low blood pressure. Uh, the release of renin or that protein renin starts that process of angiotensin 1 that splits from angiotensinogen down to angiotensin 2 which is a very potent vasoconstrictor in the body. So again, that's where your ACE inhibitor class of medications comes into play so that uh, it can help lower the blood pressure for people on antihypertensive medications. Looking at intake recommendations, how much water is enough? As I said, your caffeine, people that drink a lot of coffee or uh, alcohol, uh, you know that because they tend to run to the bathroom more often to eliminate that because it is a natural diuretic. The major minerals found in the body are um, important. When we look at the bioavailability, what a person needs, how much fiber they eat in their diet because fiber binds to many of these minerals and they are eliminated from the body. So the timing of food intake along with our major minerals becomes important. Excess minerals are hard for the body to flush out, but the body adjusts the absorption to the actual needs that it has. Mega dosing with a single mineral decreases absorption of other minerals. So people that take a whole lot of calcium thinking it's going to make their bones really good and strong might alter the absorption of other minerals and have a negative effect on the body. Calcium, iron, zinc, magnesium, all compete with each other to be absorbed. So if you increase the amount of calcium uh, supplements that you take, you might notice people that are anemic because of the decrease in iron that's able to be absorbed. And then, as I said, fiber also decreases the bioavailability. So waking up in the morning, eating a very large bowl of Raisin Bran cereal and taking a multivitamin is going to counterbalance each other because the Raisin Bran cereal is going to grab all of the good stuff from that multivitamin and eliminate it through the GI tract. Um, phytate in whole grains binds the minerals and excretes them and as I said um, that can have a negative effect on the body. When we start with the part two for this uh, we will start looking at the specific minerals such as sodium, calcium, in the body.